Hi, Sketch UK again here. Uh, yeah, another short follow on video. Uh, I, th I felt like I had to really because there were so many helpful, useful, interesting educational comments on the last video and on uh, Jan's video as well. Um, and if anything, I'm kind of feeling a bit egg on face if I'm honest because. There were a few things in that last video. I made the first mistake of, I thought Jan was uh, probing down here. And it, in retrospect, it was actually obvious he was probing the, uh, well it was probing down here I think, it was probing on the positive side of the cap. So it's the, the point before the, you know, the coupling occurs by the capacitor there. And the interesting thing, and this is something I wasn't aware of at all, that there's a DC bias there. Uh, and again, this is a, t a, a tip picked up from uh, a number of people commenting on the last video. If you carefully put the meter here, hopefully you can see that. And if we measure across the capacitor, there's two here, one for the channel where left channel, one for the right channel. Um, and if we probe across the contacts, can you see there? We've got a, a bias, DC bias. Of around 2.5 volts, it's fluctuating a little bit. Um, and that might be why it maybe it's a good idea to add a bipolar cap, I don't know. But in general, I think if you bias the input by, I don't know, 2.5 volts, by the time that, you know, what's happening is you've got your, you've got your AC signal, you know, your positive and negative sweeps, and you're moving it up, you're biasing it by 2.5 volts. So by the time it enters the positive side of this cap, it's all a positive signal. Does that make sense? It might make more sense if we scope it in a sec. And I think the benefit of that is you then don't have negative cycles affecting that cap in any kind of adverse way from what I understand. It seems like a common practice technique of biasing the input before the coupling cap in order to, to deal with that. It's a cheap, I think, a cheap and cheerful way of uh, dealing with it. It's just a question of whether it does occasionally just dip, you know, to touch very light, uh, low, you know, low voltage level on the negative side. And I think it probably does to a small degree because Jan evidenced that himself on his own video, I think. Uh, so, yeah, there was a mistake there in terms of I wasn't comparing like for like, for one thing. But also I wasn't aware of this bias here and the, the benefit to that, the reason why you would do that and the reason why Commodore did that. I mean, you can see, look, it shot up quite a lot there. It's like 2.6. Uh, I'm holding on there. It's fluctuating a fair bit. What's going on here? Maybe I wasn't making a good connection, but, yeah, I mean, you can see it is fluctuating a fair bit, actually. Well, within about 100 millivolts-ish. We'll get the scope onto that next and uh, see what we can see from that angle. Uh, I'm going to try the Velum and Handel one to start with just because it's convenient and then I might get the Hameg back onto it again. Uh, if I can, I don't know that I can, someone suggested setting up the uh, channel 1 and channel 2 on that scope in a differential mode so that you can measure across that way. Um, I'm not really sure. <laughs> we'll, we'll give that a go. I mean, there were a few other things as well. There was a comment that the ground is not the same ground. Well, no, that's not the case, because I've looked at the schematics, and you can do a connectivity test. The ground here is the main ground. So I'm not really sure what that person was uh, trying to helpful, helpfully uh, point out. So on the uh, cheap scope here, you can see the centre line. Everything is above it now, because we're on DC coupling on the input to that cap, you know, the positive side of that capacitor. We don't really see it hitting the negative side whatsoever there. It's very hard to see, but this scope is awful. So I will just go and connect the hammer up, and we can, I don't know, I can see whether I can do anything with the differential thing between channel 1 and channel 2 to see if we can get anything more meaningful there as a measurement as well. So just setting the scope up again, uh, I didn't realise there's a switch here to switch between channel 1 and channel 2 actually, because yesterday I think I was showing either one or both of them together, but there is a switch to toggle between channel one and channel two. So what I was talking about yesterday in terms of, in terms of you know, in relation to ground, it being a positive negative swing, yeah, that is the case. Although someone pointed out it's not in relation to ground, but I failed to see how it's not in relation to ground, because on the connector itself, you've got ground and you've got the audio output, and those are the two connections that go to the TV or the amplifier or whatever. So it is in relation to ground. But the fact that that cap is DC biased, you know, this signal sh shifted right up. I can show you that. If we switch, uh, switch it, uh, the dual off and we just put it on channel one. If I just uh, probe the uh, other side, I'll need to put it onto DC coupling. I'll leave it on AC just to show you the signal. Hang on. So that's on AC coupling on the input. Switch it onto DC coupling. You can see we jump right up here. 
Does that make sense? If I change it, lower the voltage, it should be a bit more visible. So that's our ground level, and we are well above it at this point in time. So you can see we're on DC coupling, the dot is there at the moment, but ground level is bang in the middle, as I'll show you in a sec. If I just hit fire. Now, when this intro music starts here, this is a good example of where it, it clips a reasonable amount into the negative side. You see that? Yeah. Not very much, but still, you can see it clipping. Can you see, look at... You see the little dips, you can see little peaks here just hitting that. When the volume's super loud there, I'm playing Lotus Cert 3 here by the way. I'm guessing I'll do it here. Yeah, you can see just little peaks just going under the, the negative line there. So it's a really super, super, super minor problem. Which is kind of what I always expected anyway, to be honest. Because it's not like these caps fail within six months of going into, you know, machine going into service. They don't. They last years, maybe even a decade or more, before they start to leak. But, out of the 500 boards I've got here, I've replaced uh, the caps on, uh, I think, how many have I got? I've got six boards here. I would say two of them had leak, one leaking cap on each on the audio side. Um, I've seen the same thing on the 2000 boards. Out of the three 2000 boards I've got, two of them had one leaking capacitor. One of them had one of them replaced. You saw that in a previous video, someone replaced it. So I think, look, can you see? We are hitting the negative uh, side here. It is dipping, look, there was a bomb there. It is dipping into the negative, just a little bit. And if I take the uh, probe off, you'll see the ground level. You can see the dot here. We're actually above the line by a tiny amount. So uh, hmm, I need to try and work out how much, uh, what voltage that is actually. It might be quite difficult to try and measure that. Yeah, so uh, all I've done there is switch it onto AC coupling just to show you what 200 millivolts looks like on the current settings. So we're, we're going more than that. I would say it's going just a bit more than 200 millivolts when it uh, dips down there. Uh, switch it back onto AC coupling. The reason you get this dot over here, by the way, when I've got it on DC, is because of the trigger. I didn't have the trigger. You see, if I set the trigger there completely on, it's, uh, you know, it shows a line. So back on DC coupling, when it does dip into this side here, I would say you're looking at 200 millivolts. Yeah, I would say for certain that, well, when I compare to the calibration mode without changing any adjustments and things on here, the amount it moves by seems to be up to 200 millivolts. That's what it seems to be dipping into here on the negative side. The one thing I would say, as I've had some fun playing with this scope actually, it's been worth uh, this investigation just to mess around with my scope to work out some of the settings I never knew existed on it. For example, you can see that that's kind of like a differential, I think. So I've got one on the positive, uh, one on the negative, and you can see the difference despite the fact that the, the grounds are identical for both of them. Um, if I switch, uh, yeah, invert channel two, you can see you kind of got like a mirror effect between them, that's quite nice. And it's on chop mode at the moment, so they switch the chop off. Then obviously it's very different, but yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, if I invert channel 2 and put it on add, you get that interesting line there. I'm not really sure what that's showing, actually. Comments down below. It's like, I think if it's inverted, they cancel each other out, and that's the addition of the remainder, I think. I think that's what we're seeing. That's between the uh, one side of the cap and the other side of the cap. Bear in mind, you've got different uh, cup coupling going on and stuff. Obviously, I've got these both set to AC at the moment, just to remove the bias. You know, if I put the bias back on, you can see it jumps up here on the input. Uh, bias on the other side doesn't make a difference, because obviously it's not biased. There's no DC. The other thing I would say, to Jan in particular, don't get uh, stressed about these things. You know, you make mistakes. I make mistakes. He made a mistake in the last video. I made a mistake by probably uploading another video. Um, but that was just because I really believed that this was uh, an issue. And I, th I still think it is, but I think it's so, 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 so minor. It probably isn't worth worrying about. Uh, I think also, reading some of the comments from other people as well, talking about why the audio caps fail in 2000s and 500s and some of the other models as well, like 4000s and things like that, 1200s. In some of them, obviously, the caps are mounted the wrong way around. Well, that's going to shorten the life uh, super quick on an electrolytic. Yeah, and that's an obvious one, but... Um, 
I think it's about the quality of the caps, and as I said earlier, I think it's the fact that these are coupling caps. Maybe they have, uh, you know, relatively hard life compared to, say, a smoothing cap. I honestly don't know. I just know that I've seen coupling caps fail more than perhaps uh, in other areas on the board. But then again, certainly well, the SMD caps, they all fail anyway, don't they? It's like they all fail on the board. It's not just the audio caps. So just wrapping this video up, yeah, I would say it's super minor. It's really not worth worrying about. It's a question of whether you want to swap those caps or not. Uh, but I'm pretty sure you'll be all right if you don't. Um, I see nothing wrong with the, the bipolar caps in terms of the quality of the audio that goes through. I don't see any issues there at all. It's the sound perfect. You know, the sound comes out perfect. The signals look just the same when they go through pol polarized caps to me on my scope. So. I don't think there's any issues there, it's just an optional thing. This is a Rev 5 board by the way, um, I'm not sure if I showed this yet, this might be another repair video coming up soon because there's a few more 500 boards to come up yet. This one's got standard electrolytics, you know, polarised caps here, not bipolars on this one. But yeah, if you've not already checked out Jan's channel, check out his channel, I'll post a link to his uh, video, the video that this is in relation to, and my previous video. And thank you very much to everybody who's commented and uh, Hopefully there'll be some more comments and suggestions and more things we can check. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you soon.